As lengthy sabbaticals go, Shania Twain's is right up there. The 15 year gap between her last album, Up, and today's return might pale alongside the 25 years it took Roger Waters to deliver this summer's Is This the Life We Really Want? But it pips TLC's recent self titled comeback, 14 years, and Knox blurs the magic whip, 12, into a cocked hat. The Canadian had signed off on a high in 2002. Singles such as that don't impress me much in man. I feel like a woman were impossible to avoid in the late 90s and early noughties, and Twain's catchy blend of country, pop, and rock have made her one of the best selling female singers ever. The intervening years have certainly not been dull. In 2004, she contracted Lyme disease and suffered nerve damage to her vocal cords. Six years later, her marriage to South African producer Mutt Lang ended in divorce after he had an affair with her best friend. In a storyline worthy of one of those old Nashville standards that inspired her to take up singing in the first place, Shania sought solace in the arms of her former friend's estranged husband, Are You Keeping Up?, and the two of them married in 2011. With so many twists and turns, a Toa born Twain, 52, shouldn't be short of inspiration, and she duly tackles her emotional turmoil here. I wasn't just broken, I was shattered, she admits on life's about to get good. While poor me finds her reflecting, still can't believe he'd leave me to love her. She also embraces her newfound happiness, although her candid outpourings tend to scratch the surface, where they could have dug deeper. With her former studio collaborator Lang now persona non grata, she also vacillates wildly musically. She juggles four producers here, with Surrey-born Ed Sheeran's sidekick Jake Gosling, American keyboardist Ron Aniello, Grammy-winning pop songwriter Matthew Coma, and Roots rocker Jaquire King all taking turns. As a result, now is a muddled album. After opening with the tepid reggae of swinging with my eyes closed, Twain reasserts her credentials as the queen of country pop on home now. Her singing augmented with banjo and fiddle. There's a country rock feel to We Got Something They Don't Too, though the most interesting track lifts Shania out of her Nashville bubble. With piano, strings and subtle synths to the fore, Who's Gonna Be Your Girl makes the most of her creamy voice and is the best song here. The big earworms arrive towards the end of the album, with You Can't Buy Love, a 60 soul pastiche, and Life's About to Get Good, a honky tonk down that looks exuberantly forward. It's typical of Twain that, even in her darkest hour, she just can't quell those high spirits. Like Shania, Mealy Cyrus has roots in country, her dad is singer Billy Ray Cyrus, he of the achy breaky heart, but her current fame owes as much to her provocative stage show and eye-popping outfits as it does her upbeat pop songs. Neely has toned down her look ahead of the sixth album. Without returning to the clean cut style of Hannah Montana, the character she played as a Disney child star, her outfits are now almost demure. But, 
Beneath the more conservative image, she is making some intriguing musical moves. Writing with la hip hop keyboardist Oren Yo, but penning all the lyrics herself, she trusts her own instincts on an album that edges her away from the synth pop of 2013's Bangers by using real instruments instead of electronics. As she sings on the title track, with an attractive catch in her voice, change is a thing you can count on, and the sense of a young artist moving forwards is inescapable. Her godmother Dolly Parton duets on bluegrass tune Rainbowland, while the title track is underpinned by twangy country guitars. Recent single Malibu is a potent statement of intent, with Yoel's production neither overstated her too stripped back. I'd never have believed you if, three years ago, you told me I'd be writing this song, sings Mealy on a contemplative number that evokes swaks on Californian beaches in much the same way as Lana Del Rey's more sullen West Coast. She attempts to shake off a wayward lover on Week Without You before showcasing her impressive voice on Inspired, the McCartney-esque ballad she sang at the One Love Manchester concert. At 24, pop son Fon Terrible is coming of age. With an ability to assimilate Britpop, punk, folk rock and grunge and make them their own, Wolf Alice are primed to be the next big British guitar band. Visions of a Life, produced by Bex bassist Justin Meldell Johnson, will broaden their appeal. Singer Ellie Rossell displays her inner CCSU on the punky yuckfu, but excels on the dreamy pop of Planet Hunter and the slow burning Go Delete the Kisses. This Manchester duo's fourth album benefits from assured songwriting and a more radio-friendly outlook than before. The electronic pop of Beautiful Ones recalls tears for fears and the Pet Shop Boys, while Boyfriend supplies playful echoes of Prince at his most funky. The production is often too manicured, and Theo Hutchcraft could live without the auto-tune applied to his voice on Chaperone. He fares far better on the Ameli Sand-like piano ballad Magnificent. Demi Lovato, Tell Me You Love Me, Hollywood, a female foil to the Jonas Brothers and the teenage camp 